We've got our guest for tonight. Uh, very excited, very glad uh, that this individual is going to be joining us again. Uh, Josh Mers, who's the uh, chair of the Fayette County Democrats. Uh, and uh, Josh, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being on. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, although I got to say that uh, the first uh, 20, uh, 25 minutes or so of the show tonight has been like extremely heavy. And uh, like, I feel like we need to uplift people <laughs> and, and maybe put a put a, a little happy story in here or something. You got some jokes? <laughs> <laughs> All I have are dad jokes. My favorite is the, how does the ocean say hello? How does it say hello? Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna be happy. We're gonna be uplifting. Um, what did the salmon say when it ran into the wall? Damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, you're right there with me. <laughs> Northwest joke, uh, Northwest dad joke. All right, so, uh, but we're excited to have you on because there's some stuff going on <laughs> that um, I'll be honest, we recruited uh, our members. We talked about reorg. You came out, you talked about reorg. We, we spread the word about this process with the weird title called reorg, giving people a chance to help shape and help lead and help engage uh, the Democratic Party. And they answered the call, Josh. I am very excited to say that in Montgomery County, like 100% of the 100% of the people on the Montgomery County precinct committees are folks that we talk to, folks we work with, our activists. They are now looking at us going, uh, what what now? <laughs> what are we doing now? We didn't necessarily sign up to, you know, to take on the leadership of this county completely. So um, yeah, uh, where are we in the process? Uh, and what should we be thinking about for our next steps? So, you know, first of all, reorganization that, you know, we just kind of, we run around and call it reorg. It's one of the greatest things about our party uh, in that we completely reorganize the party from the foundation up uh, all the way from, you know, from our precinct level committees, which is your local neighborhood, all the way to our state central executive committee, which is the governing body for the entire Kentucky Democratic Party. <clears throat> What's amazing is every four years we reorganize it and we're in the middle of that. And right now we're at the point to where, it's kind of the confusing part <laughs> because it turns into uh, it turns into now there's very big differences between what Jefferson and Fayette are doing and what the other 118 counties are doing. Um, so everybody except for Jefferson and Fayette are now electing their actual county executive committees, and that comes from the voting portion of that are the folks that uh, were elected to the precinct committees. And of course, every precinct committee could have a man, woman, or non-binary could fit in either spot, uh, and a youth member under 35 or 35 and under. Um, those folks then get to nominate and vote for, in those other 118 counties, they get to nominate and vote for uh, their county executive committee, uh, which will then elect their county chair and vice chair. Now here in Fayette County, uh, as you're, you're, you know, you and I are in the same legislative district. And so we're getting to see the legislative district process where Fayette County is broken up into 10 LDs and we're going to elect a chair and a vice chair from each L legislative district. So, you know, if you're downtown, it's going to be the 77th or the 75th. You're going to elect a chair and a vice chair. Um, then we will move on to elect the county chair and the county vice chair. And after that, we'll constitute the at-large members, uh, which are legislative district. So they're bound by the, the state house district, if you will. Uh, but they'll join the chair and the vice chair of that legislative district to make up the overall um, county party for Fayette County. Uh, we're also, there's two other positions that if you're in the process, you probably saw, we didn't talk a lot about. Uh, every legislative district has to elect delegates to the state convention. Um, so we're, we're doing that. And that's the folks that basically get to vote on the state central executive committee. Um, and then we're also electing a, uh, a credentials committee member from each legislative district and an alternate. And that person just has kind of a, a ceremonial duty to help bring the state convention together. That's kind of where we're at. Nominations for legislative district chair and the other two positions or vice chair and the other two positions closes on May the 10th. <clears throat> so you've got until Monday to make your nominations. Uh, and then we will vote. I believe it's the 15th through the 18th. That's not right. It's the 13th through the 15th. Now I just made myself question, so I'm going to go back and look to make sure I just said the right thing. It is the 15th through the 18th is when we will actually vote 
for our legislative district chairs and vice chairs, or if you're one of the 118 other counties besides Jefferson Fayette, you'll be voting for your county executive committee. So what, you know, what is a, if you're talking to, a, you know, a Progress Kentucky supporter who's in one of these counties who I, you know, twisted their arm to get involved, uh, and now they're like, all right, well, okay, what do I need to do? Like, as I'm going to elect, you know, I'm going to nominate people to this leg legislative district, kind of chair, vice chair thing, or I'm going to nominate somebody to my county executive committee. Like, what does a healthy county executive committee look like? What, what kind of activists or what kind of people should we be looking for to take these leadership roles? Or, you know, and what does it require of them once they're in these leadership roles? So first off, you know, looking at what should a county executive committee look like? It should look like the Democratic Party of that county. Um, you know, so here in Fayette County, we're very... You know, we're very proud that that our county party reflects the Democrats of Fayette County. So we've got folks from varying levels of socioeconomic status. We've got folks that are from different communities. We've got folks from across the entire county. Uh, we've got uh, um, folks that are definitely farther to the left than the mainstream. And we've got folks that are more to the middle. So we've got a good just, you know, capsule of what is the Democratic Party in Fayette County. And that's what it should look like. You know, in Montgomery County, you're going to have, you know, some folks that definitely have a very progressive stance, but you're also going to have some folks that have a more conservative stance as part of the, uh, uh, the Democratic Party. And the great part is we pull all those folks together and we make up what is uh, our county Democratic Party and then the state Democratic Party. What should they do? We've done for so long in Kentucky that we've asked people to be precinct committee folks by saying, all you got to do is show up on one day and then vote. And that's it. And that's what we've done. We've not done a, a good job. We've not done a job at all of getting those folks at the precinct level involved with, you know, being our, our, our core volunteer base and being the folks that, that really manage their neighborhood. Uh, because, you know, if I walk into a neighborhood in uh, Montgomery County and say that I'm the chair of the Fayette County Democrats and I'm telling, you know, you need to go vote for our candidates, it's a whole different conversation than, you know, Jane Doe, who lives in that neighborhood and says, yeah, I live two houses down from you and I really wanna tell you why this candidate is important. Uh, so we've gotta do a better job as county parties and as a state party of getting our precinct committees involved in the process beyond just showing up one day and voting for their LD or their county uh, parties. Yep, so you mentioned the kind of knocking on doors. Like I feel like that is kind of, of course I'm, you know, I'm a little biased because I look at this through a field lens. I've done a lot of field organizing, but I think that's like, fundamental to the work that we should be doing at the precinct level is talking to other voters in the precinct, uh, you know, making sure folks know who our candidates are and what they stand for. Why are they a better choice than, you know, the other party? Uh, you know, uh, I think I've said before, I feel like the Democratic Party really is a PR problem. You know, I think our, our policies are actually quite popular. Uh, but there's a you know, there's a disconnect between the policies and the politicians that you know vote for those policies, right? So, and a lot of our policies get overwhelmed by some like key hot button issues. Uh, well, so, uh, I think it's really important that you know that's something that precinct committees look at as an opportunity. What other things should you know, would a you know a legislative district committee or the county party kind of committee? What would they what should they be doing uh, beyond like that door knocking and engaging Democrats that way? So engaging Democrats at, uh, at election time is, you know, we're typically pretty good at that. Um, and we don't ever want to stop doing that, right? But we have a problem that so often, especially in, uh, um, you know, minority communities or, or communities of color, we show up every November and say, hey, the Democratic Party loves you. Where are we the rest of the year? Uh, and we've got to do a better job as, as, as county parties to showing our counties and, uh, and especially you know, disadvantaged or, or, or communities that are just different than the traditional, you know, democratic executive leadership, right? Uh, the communities that look a little different than you and I. Um, we've got to do a better job of showing up on a regular basis. Let's be a, make sure we're a part of those communities so that we can learn what are the, the, the things that we need to advocate as, as, as county party volunteers. And that's, that's, that's going to be huge as we move forward as a county party, because we have in many ways lost that connection. It used to be that, you know, we were so great and we would have the, the, the kitchen table conversations. We were so good as a party at connecting to, 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 to folks that, 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 that were just average people out there. And, and we've just lost that in a way because the other side's gotten really good at doing bumper stickers. 
Like they can take their policies and slap it on a bumper sticker with two or three words. And it's hard for us to beat it because just like in this case where you asked me a question, I've now gone on a 6,000 word uh, uh, lecture about, about the county party. And, and that's where we're missing. We've got to find a way to connect to the folks that make up the Democratic Party again. We've got to do a better job of getting out into these communities. Amen. That sounds great. Uh, Kimberly, uh, you have a question for, for Josh? Go ahead. Yes, I do. Um, previously, um, Josh, you know, like you were saying, most of the precinct people really didn't do too much. Um, but when we are voting for the people that will be the LD vice and on the committee and things like that, I'm just a little confused as we really talk about this. Um, on the third level, that's the at large. Am I correct? Yes. And what exactly does the at large do? So I want to I want to preface that uh, Jefferson County does do their at large process a little differently than Fayette County does. Um, we uh, once we constitute here in Fayette County, once we constitute the county chair, county vice chair, the LD chair, and the LD vice chair then we work as a committee to nominate and fill the at-large positions. Uh, what the at-large positions are, so in, in, in one of the other, you know, 118 counties, they immediately elect their entire county party, which has a minimum of 10 people and a maximum of 20 people for those other 118 counties, unless there's been an exception made for whatever reason. Um, so they immediately elect all 10 to 20. We will elect again in Fayette County, we're going to elect the LD chairs and the vice chairs. And then, you know, for example, the 88th has, I believe it's three at large members, the 75th, the 76th and the 77th, I think have a three or four, the 39th has one. And so we'll add those positions. Now what they become, they are full voting members of the executive committee. Uh, so these folks are, you know, the, they, they will lead you know, subcommittees of the, of the county party. They will participate in, you know, any kind of elections and so forth. One of the biggest things that a lot of folks don't realize is that the county parties have a huge say or a huge influence on special elections. Um, you know, so a great example of, you know, Senator Reggie Thomas from the 13th here in Fayette County, you know, he was originally elected in a special election when Kathy Stein vacated the seat to take on uh, to when she was appointed to the judiciary. Um, so the county party in Fayette County had to determine who the nominee was going to be. So it's an opportunity as an at-large member to have influence on, you know, who that special election nominee is going to be. Um, it is if there's a chair vacancy, the, uh, uh, the at-large members are the folks that have to determine who the new chair is going to be for uh, the county party. Um, if there's an LD vacancy, Again, same thing. Uh, so, you know, as far as budget, as far as planning, as far as anything major that the county party does, the LD at large members make up the majority of the actual county party. Uh, that's super helpful. One quick question I was thinking about. So as the, you know, the KDPs, the state level, you know, then these county parties that, you know, should have between 10 and 20 uh, representatives or uh, members of their, their, their committee. So, you know, in a, in a in a state like or a county like Montgomery County, where you know the Democrats are certainly not you know not as strong as they could be or should be, or they have historically been, it's going to be a challenge for them to get the the ten people on that you know that that county executive committee. What when they are there, what do they get? Like, do they get resources to work with? Do they have to fundraise their own resources? Is it like what's this? You know, what do you do as the county executive committee? And is, are there are there any tools that the party, you know, state level party gives you to do your work of engaging and uh, motivating Democrats? So it's tough. Um, it's very tough, especially, you know, the, the, the farther away from Lexington and Louisville that a county party is, uh, the tougher it becomes. Uh, you know, we have a real divide between um, between Lexington and Louisville's or Jefferson and Fayette County's parties and, you know, Eastern Kentucky parties. Um, because we have a solid Democratic base. You know, for example, you know, we received a donation from Fayette County Democratic Party today for $500 just randomly out of the blue. We didn't ask for it. It just showed up on Act Blue. 
a $500 donation may be the, the maximum contribution, like total, that a, an Eastern Kentucky par County party may receive, period. Um, so there's definitely a financial disparity. Um, as far as tools that the, uh, uh, the state provides, the greatest tool that we get access to is what's called Vote Builder. Um, and with Vote Builder, we're able to really dial in. Think of Vote Builder as like a, a super, super um, great CRM, uh, a customer uh, management type tool. Um, so we've got the ability to look at, you know, through the, it's a vote builder comes in through the DNC and the Republicans have their own version of, of, of a similar program, but we're able to dial in and look at a precinct. So I'm in the orchard grass precinct and with vote builder, you could look me up and you could see how I score based on, you know, the, the advertising type things, you know, the scoring system, you'd find that I'm a strong Democrat. You'd find that I'm a supporter of uh, marriage equality, uh, but you'd also be able to see, am I a voter? Uh, and by that we can look at, we can't tell, you know, who somebody voted for, but we've got the ability to know whether or not you showed up to vote. And so when we're looking at doors to knock, when we're looking at where to spend our resources, you know, we will target different messages to different types of voters. You know, a voter that shows up every election that's a Democrat and, and votes in five of the last five elections, it's a different message to them than a voter that votes in three of five. Um, we're just trying to firm up support versus the three to five, we're trying to make sure they get out to vote. Uh, so that's probably the greatest resource we get. And the county parties get access to that free of charge. Um, whereas, you know, a candidate would have to actually pay to have access to that. Um, the other part that, you know, the county party does a good job of, of you know, they've got a staff there that will help with messaging, um, you know, for a lot of the, the smaller areas, uh, KDP's uh, public, uh, uh, public affairs or their, their press department, if you will, will put out, you know, sample uh, uh, editorial type that you can send into your local paper. Um, they will support, you know, I've had multiple times where something has come up that, you know, one of the local news stations here in uh, Lexington have asked for comment on something. Well, you know, I'm a volunteer, right? So I, I don't have this professional, you know, media relations person. So I'll reach out to KDP and ask, hey, I need some talking points to, to help me just better understand this. And we have we all have access to that as uh, as, as as county parties. Cool. And I know Ken's got a question for you. Hello, Josh. We're, we're hey. friends on Facebook. It's good to see you again. I uh, for the first time uh, because of the show, honestly, uh, I signed up to participate on the precinct level. And so like, I'm definitely confused. I, I know that, that there are certain people in my pre precinct that are running for LD and I think that's great and I want them to win, but I, I, I'm not sure, are you guys going to send us this stuff or is this uh, like, I, it's, it's, it seems like we're kind of organizing, which I, I don't know if they had Slack before. We, we made a Slack. We, we are, I, I think we're pretty excited to like reach out into our communities and gather together. Um, is this, are we doing like something that's new or is this something that you, you've, you've been doing like just for our precinct level kind of thing? So the biggest thing to, to really understand on Reorg is that this is the first time we've ever done it as a virtual process. Um, it used to be that precinct committee uh, elections would be, you know, on a Saturday at 10 a.m., you would show up at your voting location and you would constitute your precinct committee. And then you would elect a chair out of the three people if you had three. Then a couple of weeks later, we'd all show up, you know, here in uh, Lexington, we typically use the uh, speech and hearing center. They have a, a great space for us. Um, we would all show up. Uh, on this one Saturday and we would break off into different parts of the gymnasium and we would elect our LD chair and our vice chair and then the LD chairs would get spirited off over to a spot and we would elect our county chair and our vice chair. Um, so there wasn't the same, you know, like dr length of the process. It was, you know, wham, bam, we're done. Um, so, you know, for example, setting up the Facebook groups for, uh, you know, Aaron, uh, again, same uh, uh, legislative district, set up a Facebook group. We've never done that before for our legislative district. And that's great. We're getting an opportunity to, to, to maybe get to know people in our own legislative district a little bit better. The Slack channel that you, uh, you set up, that's fantastic. Um, 
as far as what you're being sent, you should have gotten a, an email from the reorganization process that said, you know, you can nominate. And you go in and you can nominate the LD chair, the vice chair, the delegate, and uh, credentials uh, person. Um, once those nominations close, we'll reach out to all of the nominees, or we as in KDP, will reach out to all the nominees and we'll ask for maybe small blurbs about that person. Um, why are they running? What do they hope to accomplish? Uh, then you will get a ballot on the morning of the 15th of May that will list out who's running for your positions. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity over those three days to hopefully be able to use the Slack channel, to use the Facebook groups, to, to use email and so forth to, uh, um, to, to talk to these people. And then ideally, if somebody is running for LD chair or vice chair, they have already started to reach out to the precinct committee people um, and, 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 and let them know uh, and tell folks, you know, why they want to be the LD chair, or the vice chair. And the, the advice that I've given to everybody that's reached out and talked to me is treat it like a campaign. You are campaigning for votes of a small select group. Um, so, you know, do that. The, the only thing in the voting that's, you know, going to make any, everything even more confusing. And I even hesitate to break it up, but every precinct is weighted. Um, so to give you an idea, my precinct in the 88th has my vote as the precinct committee is worth, I think like 185 votes. Um, another precinct in the 88th has 312 votes per person. Uh, if you go into the 76th into the Kenwick area, you've got the Walton and uh, Victory precincts. And those precincts have, you know, eight and 900 votes uh, uh, per person because they are so, there is just a greater concentration of registered Democrats in, in those precincts. So for the LD chairs, for the LD vice chair, the delegates and so forth, for those LD conventions, the precincts are weighted. You will actually vote for every registered Democrat in your precinct. It's a lot of, it's a lot of power. <laughs> it, it feels powerful. I mean, I, I think there's goodness to, to living in a neighborhood with a lot of people. I enjoy city life, unlike some people in Childsburg. <laughs> I love city life. What are you talking about? No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, so, so Fayette County is clearly getting more progressive. Uh, it seems like we're, we were number three in the nation of uh, like Lexington, Fayette County and, and gains for, you know, more Democrats and more, we become bluer. Uh, what, what are some of the things the Fayette County are the what the democratic party, not the Fayette County uh, to that, that you know of that we're going to do to, to outreach reach into rural areas. Cause I know that's a lot of what's on my mind. Uh, and I, I'm sure that there are folks, uh, who are kind of excited about being a part of this process and reaching out into not only our community, but into other communities outside of Fayette County. Yeah, no, I mean, no doubt Fayette County has definitely grown more progressive. Um, you are correct. We were, it was third or fourth as far as metropolitan areas that uh, the greatest swing against like that Donald Trump got worse. Uh, the thing that I'll, I'll remind folks is we're probably, you know, registration in Fayette County is probably 60, 62 percent Democrat. But our Republicans are a different brand of Republicans in Fayette County for the most part. Now, we've got some of the Republicans that are like, oh, my gosh, how can you possibly still believe that way in 2021? But we've also got Republicans that are, you know, they, they, they meet that suburban Republican definition, if you will. And they're not as they're very physically conservative, but they're not socially conservative. And so it's a different Republican than you see in a lot of areas of Kentucky. Now, you bring up the greatest question and the greatest problem that the Kentucky Democratic Party has, period, facing us, is how do we bridge the divide between the urban and rural parts of our party? Uh, because you have two different takes on it. You have that, yes, we have to be able to talk about the issues that are affecting rural Kentucky. And I grew up in rural Kentucky myself, um, so I know what Democrats in rural Kentucky are like. Um, we have to be able to bridge that divide. But here's the thing, and this is what I argue when we, we get on the statewide uh, level on, on, on a regular basis, is that if we move so far to the middle as a party to try to have that connection with rural Kentucky, to, to have that connection, that we forsake the beliefs of what makes the urban areas become more democratic, then you're gonna lose the urban Democrats. And, you know, 
I don't know really how to describe it, but without Lexington and Louisville, we do not have the ability to, to, to affect an election, if you will, on a statewide level. It's important that we go back to those kitchen table type issues and we talk about that we are the party for working families of Kentucky, that we can have smart budgeting, that we can you know, balance our budget not on the backs of our working families of Kentucky, but we can do the things that invest in infrastructure in Eastern Kentucky, that we can invest in, in uh, wireless internet, that we can invest in our educational opportunities, that we cannot forsake these areas that we've long forgotten about as, as Democrats um, without giving up the fact that we believe in accountability for our law enforcement, that we believe in you know, fairness, that we believe that folks should be able to love whoever they love. We don't have to give up those parts of the issues in order to talk about the other kitchen table issues, because I promise you, infrastructure is just as important to me, but I want to be able to drive on that new road with my husband without being, you know, bullied. Yeah, well, the Biden infrastructure plan, I think we had a call to action last week uh, to call our senators and representatives and say we need this uh, infrastructure plan. I feel like that is a big Democratic avenue uh, that is very important. Uh, that because the coal jobs are leaving and I've talked to coal miners and they've said, you know, it's not coming back. So it's, it's just like, what, what do we do? We need some infrastructure, you know, we, we've got to be able to build something and have some kind of education system. And yeah, I I think that's all important stuff. The the challenge is that coal, you know, we have too often get caught up on the industry of coal and we forget about the culture of coal. Imagine if you came into central Kentucky and said, you know, well, the horse industry is a dying industry and we're not going to do anything to support it. You'd have a lot of people really upset, not because, you know, like I have no reliance on the horse racing industry or the, or the thoroughbred industry, but I like the fact that Lexington has such an exposure to it. Um, you know, as coal was a struggling industry in a lot of these communities across Eastern Kentucky, we failed to to bring in infrastructure, to bring in educational spending to try to replace that industry. Uh, And we had a lot of folks that were just left holding the bill that Democratic governors of this state failed to uh, to provide for them. Um, We've got to do a better job at that. We've got to recognize and own up that we didn't do our part for the last 40 years. Uh, But the Republicans also have to quit trying to blame the EPA for coal being a, a struggling or dying industry. Um, it's a sign of the times and, and, and coal is just not what it used to be. Yep. So I think, uh, to close out this interview and again, Josh, thanks so much for being generous with your time. Uh, I want to throw it to our young Democrat. Cause I hear Josh, I think you aged out. You're no longer a young Democrat. Is that true? Listen here. Now I will come through the screen. I have got until September the 1st before I age out. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I turned 40 on September the 1st and officially my young democratic career of, goodness, the last 22 years will come to a close. Oh, man, I hope you're having a big party, a big send off for your. (laughs) But no, uh, the next wave of young Democratic leaders, uh, our own Annabelle Nagel. Okay, so this is just like the most basic question possible. (laughs) But what do you feel like is the most like why should young people be getting involved with this? Like specifically, specifically like the high school age? Like I'm the chair of the Kentucky High School Dems and we did a whole lot of outreach and I feel like only like two people actually did it. So what do you think is like a good inspiration or whatever for us? Uh, You know, I mean, you don't want the direction of the party decided by people that have no clue what Snapchat is, that have no clue. I got told the other day that Facebook was for old people now. Um, but you don't want us to make the decision for you. And that was part of what always got me when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, early in college. That's what got me involved is I'll never forget thinking that, you know, that there are U.S. senators that don't know how to use a a, a computer. They don't. They didn't. Uh, And that that's ridiculous that, you know, how can somebody that is 70 years older than me ever possibly understand the world that I'm living in and, and growing up in? Uh, and one of my greatest, and, and, and Aaron, I'll have to try to get it to you, Aaron, so that you can share it if you choose. There was this uh, uh, 
uh, joke video that was put out that uh, was saying, you know, it, it was a group of older people talking to young people saying, you know, you don't vote, but I do. And saying, you know, like one of the lines was climate change. I don't care. I'll be dead before the earth is gone, but you won't. Uh, but we have a, a serious problem of, of connecting with youth, you know what I mean? And, and so the more youth that we have involved in our local party and in our state party, the better, the more opportunities we have to be able to connect with youth and, and, and pass that torch on. Um, we need that voice. Uh, you know, you see, you know, I, I don't like to admit that I'm old, but, you know, like Aaron had to point out, I'm turning 40, so I'm not going to be a young Democrat anymore. Um, and I have a different view of the world than, than you do, Annabelle. And my, my view of the world is, is not the only view that needs to have a voice in the, in the Fayette County Democratic Party. We need voices like yours. I'm so excited that Lamar Allen uh, stepped up with a great crew to, to reconstitute the Fayette County Young Democrats. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing to see people getting involved and to see youth taking on uh, an, an interest with something so like just convoluted like reorganization and wanting to be a part of, of not dismantling the party, but be a part of fixing it and, and helping us move on to that next generation of what is the party going to look like in 10, 15, 20 years. That's why youth need to be there. Uh, it's going to be your party. There's going to come a point that the people like me are going to sit on the back row and say, all right, it's your turn. Um, don't you want to have an opportunity to shape what the party looks like when the gavel gets handed over? That's great. All right. So thanks again, Josh. Uh, I think we are, so we got our crew, they're engaged in the reorg. They now got a little bit more insight. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, I, I still think it's, you know, the important thing is keep your eye on what we want to get out of the D Democratic Party. And, you know, I think there's a whole lot of people who are nervous about, you know, affiliating with the Democratic Party uh, and, you know, want to see the right kind of policies, but don't necessarily know that they trust the that, that entity to help shepherd them through. But the reality of it is like, if we don't elect more Democrats, we are just, <laughs> we are not gonna get better as a state. We've seen what Republican leadership gets us. And it's, you know, trying to take away the governor's power and give away our taxes to corporations. Like, is that what you want? The Democrats are fighting for, you know, uh, I think, you know, the right thing or closer to the right thing. And the more engaged we get to hold the Democratic party to account, I think we'll get even better. So uh, anyway, thanks so much, Josh. Thanks for your views. Thanks for your information. Uh, and uh, we will uh, see you, I'm sure, quite soon. Absolutely. Thank you all. And uh, keep up the good work. Awesome. Kimberly, uh, how is your audio? <laughs> Can we hear you? <laughs>